African Media Initiative's business blog discusses topics pertinent to media businesses on the African continent with business leaders and thought leaders to look at trends, identify opportunities, and examine possible solutions to the many challenges facing media organizations as they try to navigate today's rapidly changing media landscape. In today's discussion, Masenji Mazoka, head of funding for South African Broadcasting Corporation, talks about how to fund creation of new television content. The funding unit is primarily responsible for uh, fundraising, specifically for content. We primarily focus on education content, uh, what's considered mandate content in the South African context. So education, children, all of those developmental uh, content areas that we have to provide as a public service broadcaster. Well, I think Africa's assets are just far and vast. Number one, our beautiful landscape. Um, and I know that Cape Town, uh, Mauritius, and Kenya have been very active in, in, in terms of marketing uh, uh, their locations as potential uh, shoots, shoot spots, or shooting spots, actually. So, um, you know, aside from that, you have beautiful and wonderful, compelling stories that come out of the continent. Many, many untold stories that have yet, you know, to grace the earth, if you will. Um, stories that I think are really unfounded. Uh, well, I mean, just, just doing that, I think that uh, tourist bureaus from all of, the country, all of the countries around the continent have a wonderful opportunity to raise the visibility of the um, uh, terrain and landscape of the various countries. I mean, because the continent is so rich and so vast and, and has such a wide variety of, you know, terrains and landscapes, it really is an opportunity for all countries to um, uh, participate in that regard. Um, so, yes, tourist companies, you know, the tourism departments can work with departments of arts and cultures, mer merge together, you know, and really go out and promote uh, the beauty of our countries. Well, I think as Africa migrates into the whole DTT platform, it's going to be very much of a challenge, as it has been for a lot of countries, you know. Uh, once you have a plethora of channels, how do you fill it with content? Um, and we're already challenged by uh, small uh, budgets, you know, in terms of the acquisition of content. But I think that there are a lot of opportunities for our broadcasters. For our public service broadcasters, uh, there's access to actually free content that speaks to some of the developmental needs of various African countries whether it be from the United Nations and all the, their various affiliates. Um, also, NGOs produce a lot of content that are in line with their foci. So whether it's health, whether it's agriculture, whether it's um, you know, the eradication of certain diseases, there are opportunities there to tap into NGOs and some of their fundings and foundation funding to create content that is really relevant to the continent. Uh, we have a lot of similar issues, you know, particularly if you look at SATA countries and some of the other countries, you know, throughout the continent. So uh, really consolidating some of the, the issues into relevant content could serve very well and it could be shared. We could get into content sharing opportunities for different African countries, dub the content into many, dub the content into different languages so that it's appropriate for Francophone countries, Anglophone countries, and also indigenous languages. So there are a lot of opportunities there. Content ownership is a big issue globally, you know. Um, he who pays the, the piper wants to kind of keep everything uh, in their pocket, but uh, that's the benefit of working with um, soft money. So when you work with and acquire uh, funding from, whether it be philanthropists or uh, NGOs or foundation, oftentimes they're more generous in terms of uh, the rights issues. They're not so concerned with the ownership piece. Um, so it is an opportunity for countries to tap into those resources and then um, be able to keep the rights for that uh, content uh, if, if, if it's paid for by some with soft money. With commercial advertisers and for commercial entities, whether, you know, commercial broadcasters, there are opportunities to tap into your uh, corporations. You do have some global companies that do operate throughout the continent. Um, 
AFP is a very big advertiser-funded program. This is a way to tap into um, opportunities to create exciting entertainment content that builds brands and so forth. But of course, to be cautious about what kind of messaging are you sending to your people, you know, um, because all money is not free. There's always a price to pay. So we just have to be conscious of those types of things, particularly with the colonial history of the continent. So we really need to, I think, be conscious as uh, media producers, as in what kinds of messages are we setting out, you know. Let's not sell our souls. My outlook is positive, you know. I think that as a continent we do have a lot of stories, stories to tell, and they are getting out there. I mean, look at the, you know, the success of Nollywood. I think where we are with Nollywood, or the, the, the example from Nollywood tells us that African stories do resonate with, you know, Africans and even beyond. But, you know, it's, it's so interesting to look at Nollywood as a case study because Everyone from around the continent, for the most part, is you know is, is entrenched in these stories. No matter who it is, and all, you know throughout all all parts of the continent. So the idea is that we know how to tell stories, and I think moving forward, just we need to work on the quality of it uh, and so forth to bring it up to a level where we can really sweat those assets, send them out throughout the world, um, generate revenue for them, so that we can come back and tell more stories.